This is Sherborne House, a picture-perfect Palladian facade, but its real treasure is inside. These murals are the work of Sir James Thornhill, known for pieces at Hampton Court, Blenheim Palace and St Paul's Cathedral, but this was a private commission. Their slow deterioration is the main reason that Sherborne House has been on the at-risk register for more than a decade, but now they've been restored. There was quite considerable paint loss um, and the paintings were very dusty, very dirty. There was some quite urgent remedial treatment that needed doing. Claire, where do you start with a project like this one? Um, in terms of the painting, you start at the top and you work down. That's how you approach conservation projects. You really get an understanding. You, you see the, the individual brush strokes as you're cleaning. You can see the underdrawing. You can see where he's made little adjustments or he's changed a certain position. You, you feel the working artist through these paintings. They are nationally significant because they are a personal work um, towards the end of Thornhill's life and Thornhill was an incredibly important artist and these paintings are important because he is the artist. So the murals have been restored and the house is now clearly well on its way. In order to restore one house, well they set about building a whole load more. Tucked away around the back is a new development. 44 homes built privately as part of a deal that saved Sherborne House for future generations. The developers will pay to restore not just the murals, but the whole of the main house. You all want the same thing at the end of the day. You want to produce something that's worthwhile and of value and that you've got tremendous pride in. It's about a sense of achievement. I don't perhaps put it too highly, but certainly everyone who's worked on the new build scheme and on, on the refurbishment of the, of the house have all taken a tremendous pride in it. We had a building that was uh, deteriorating before our eyes, you know, we couldn't let it go on. There are many occasions when planning authorities have been very, very rigid and that's simply not acceptable these days, I think. You've got to be realistic and there will be a tension between developers and planners and the conservation bodies like English Heritage, but if you get together with a common vision, there is usually a way forward. If you try to remember what the other party is trying to achieve, at the end of the day you just work through any difficulties that might arise, but uh, you keep your eye on the main objective, which is to create what hopefully will be a valuable asset to Sherwood for the future.